this wisdom is the wisdom that was handed down throughout the centuries of the early fathers who showed us how to get closer and closer to God, beginning with the first rung, which is a renunciation of this world, to allow to say no to this world filling us so that God can fill us. And I remember preaching about it, and I wanted to help us understand it, so I brought out a ladder, because as you see those candelia, you know how do those candelia get lit? Those vigil lamps, you need a ladder. When you think about it, in order for us to receive the light of God's Spirit and to come down and shine, we need to keep climbing that ladder of virtue towards heaven. So I brought the physical ladder out. I did, so that you can see it. And it's kind of crazy, really crazy to the point. And I started preaching and I started going up rung after rung. And it seemed so crazy that my good friend Nick Spropolis, who would sit right here, ran to the ladder and he held on to it. Do you remember that? And he grabbed that ladder and he was holding on the whole time. He said, Father, I don't want you to fall. I don't want you to fall. And I was so touched that my friend, he didn't care and he went straight up and he, my really good friend, and he said, I'm going to hold that ladder for you so you don't fall. During Bright Week, right after Pascha, Easter, you know, the men all get together for steak night. They celebrate steak on a Wednesday or a Friday because we can. <laughs> And we could eat it, and we enjoy it, because we're not fasting. And we all get together, and I swear to God, forgive me guys, but it's like our kumbaya moment. And why is it, why is it so bonding? Because Nick Sparopoulos, who helped host it, he started a tradition, and he said, guys, we're all going to go around, and we're going to ask for our highs and our lows. I want to hear what was your high for the year, what was your low for the year so that we can hear one another. So when Nick came to his turn, you know what he said? He said, my high was when Father Vasily went up that ladder. It was really inspiring. My low was that Father Vasily kept talking for 25 more minutes. <laughs> this year, I hope I don't talk for 25 more minutes. But we will pray. But the point that I want to say is this. The men were listening to one another. And the men came together to celebrate Christ's resurrection. How often do we think about what this place is to us? We're here. And many will say this is the house of God. But how many of us see it as our own home? to our second home I had a young professional a young adult actually he wasn't even a professional yet he still was in college and he came back from university after studying for a long time finally getting through his finals getting through all that he had to do that semester and he went home and he was exhausted and tired and he was there trying to connect with his parents and connecting with his his sibling, and, then the, and he confessed and he said, you know, I didn't say I was home until I walked into the narthex of the church. And something about going in the church and they go, finally said, finally, I'm home. I'm home. Today's epistle reading, we celebrate Abraham. And the reason why we celebrate Abraham is because Abraham had tremendous faith in God. He had so much faith that he was, tell, he was told to leave everything he knew about his home on earth, the people that he lived around, and he said, follow me, and I will make you, what? A father of many nations, of many people. And we celebrate Abraham because he listened to God's voice inside of him and he was willing to leave everything and to be with God wherever God sent him. And he created the real home. He created for all of us the place where we can meet God, this church. And he became truly the father of many nations. And it says God did, did not have another example 
by which to give him. So he swore by himself. He says, I will do this for you. I will bless you. Later, God will appeal to you and me and say, I am the God of, I am the God of Abraham, and I am the God of Isaac, and I am the God of Jacob. And he will give us many examples. And we know him also to be the God of Jacob of the latter today. But Abraham was that first one, the pioneer, who said, I will follow you, God, that voice, even though I know, I don't know where we're going. And there is no one in my history who's done this before. Think about it. He was the first one. About 33 years ago, there was no Greek Orthodox Church in this city. No church at all. There was St. Elias downtown, and that was our home. But there were people that said, we want to have a Greek Orthodox Church in this city that is our own, and they started off with faith. And they heard the voice of God, and it was just a few small families that came together to try and do something new here in Westlake. And you and I are here because of the faith of those few families, a handful of people that met in someone's home. In the Gospel reading today, we also have another situation where we talk about home. But the reality is, no one is home. The father is outside of his house because he is chasing after his son. His son is what? According to him, a dumb spirit. His son being a dumb spirit means he has nothing to say. He can't speak. There's no voice. And you and I know how important it is to have our voice. We hear about it in all of society today. Women, do you have a voice in this country? Comes out. Minorities, do they have a voice in this country? What is the voice? that each person is supposed to have. This young boy had no voice. He had a dumb spirit. And the father was outside of his home chasing after him. And what did it say? The boy from childhood would throw himself into fire or water. In other words, whatever was happening in life, he was being burned up or he was drowning. but he wasn't at home. And just like that baby that was crying out, the voice, he was crying out. If you go to some of the original Greek, the cries were the same words that Homer used to describe the cries of those in Haiti. And it's the same cry that is coming from within that we use when we say, Lord, I have cried out unto you with my voice. I'm crying out. The boy spirit, even though it's dumb, somehow there's this talk about crying out. The father was crying out. But he wasn't at home. Not yet. There was no home for him because he was chasing his son outside of his house, outside of home, outside of comfort, outside of sanctuary, outside of place. And then Jesus Christ asked the Father, how long has this been happening? And the Father said, since childhood. And then the Father crying out with that same cry that we hear of those cries even being down in Hades. He says, if you have pity, Lord, if you have any pity, have mercy on us, do something. For your disciples could not do it. Isn't that interesting? Mark chapter 6, the disciples were sent two by two. They were sent two by two and they were given the power of God above to drive out demons, to perform many types of miracles. And he was told, they were told by Jesus, 
go into every village and the house, the home that invites you in, that's where you will stay and you will be able to perform your miracles, the miracles and say, in that home and to the village, what? The kingdom of heaven is at hand. It's right here. Mark chapter 6. Now we're at Mark chapter 9. And in just three chapters later, what happened? The disciples who had the power of God to say that the kingdom of heaven is at hand and to drive out demons and to do all these wonderful things are have no power at all. They have nothing inside of them. It's something like you and I many times can experience and understand where we might have a problem that seems to come to it before us and we don't have the power. We don't know how to drive it out. We can't. And this is the amazing thing. So the Father is crying out. He says, your disciples didn't do anything. If you have any pity, please do something. And this is the word I want you to grab onto. And this is how the father was able to take his son finally back and have a home. He says, if you can, all things are possible for those who believe. Just like Abraham, for those who believe. We can do nothing without faith. There's nothing that we can do without it. It is the only thing that connects us and gives us the energy to take our steps forward, to go forward. It's what gave the students the ability to go to college. It's what gives us the ability to wake up in the morning and to continue to do our lives. Because you and I both, we all know that we have no idea what's in the future. And unless we're willing to have faith and put it in God's hands. Right? And that's why he says, this cannot come out by prayer and fasting. The difference is, you were relying on the power that I had given you, but there come times when you need to pray more and you need to fast. You need to let go of those things that you're holding on to right now Fast because you want me to come in and replace that which you're holding on to. You're praying because you know that you need me to now take in the situation that's at hand. You need me for your son. And that's what the disciples didn't understand. They themselves were beyond their level of capability. Now, what does this have to do? So he said, only by prayer and fasting. And then finally, when Jesus saw that all the people are coming, and he saw that there was a big tumult, he then he says to the Spirit, I tell you, I command you, he even says. I, it is I, and he reinforces it in the original Greek. He doesn't say, I command you. It is I, I, who commands you. So he lets that demon and that spirit know who it is that is speaking. And that is the same thing that you and I need to always do. It is not we who are speaking at the end. It is God inside of us who is meant to speak. It is God inside of us who is to give us that faith and that power. It is God inside of us that we are supposed to hear. And why are you and I dumb at times like this boy? Because Jesus is the first one in this gospel to say, you deaf and dumb spirit get out. The father said he was dumb. He couldn't speak. But it was Jesus who was saying he doesn't hear. And he needs to hear the word of God first before he can speak the voice of God and his voice within him. And that's why this is our home. Because the only place that I can really hear God the most is here. And the one who makes me most alive 
and makes me really at home anywhere is from this home here. That's what's so special. And that's what's so great. And so when I think about Nick Baropoulos, and he said, holding that ladder, and unfortunately I think I've spoken 25 more minutes, I don't know. But what I want to say is, you and I are here holding each other's ladders. And we're here to God, hear God's voice. So that no longer are we deaf or dumb, but we can hear everything that God is saying. And we can speak the word of God to one another and give life. At the end of church today, I'm going to have George Janakopoulos, our president, stand up and talk to you for a little while. As a church together, I feel like we're at a crossroad. We're at a crossroad with regards to what's next. What is God's voice for us? What is he trying to tell us as a church? We have all these children that are sitting here on the side and upstairs and within us. We have usually, because this is spring break, it's not, but usually a packed house. We, we have a parking situation that is untenable. We can't find parking. And there are those who are seeking classes and understanding. I've had college students say, I wish we could do Sunday school as well, but there are no rooms. I've had adults come up to me and say, I wish we could also have an adult class so we could keep hearing God's word and learning, but there are no more rooms. And when we get together to have a celebration, there's not even enough room in the hall for all of us. We're really at an amazing crossroad. It's a beautiful thing. We're all coming here into God's house, and we're here to hear God's voice. And when we hear God's voice, it's our house. It's our house, too. Because we become one with God. But we need to expand and we need to grow. There's a letter that's been passed out and I thank those families that have opened up their homes to help us grow this home. Please look at that letter. The Garwood family today is opening up their homes. 